Is it hard to find a C matrix which is similar to a matrix A? We have a theorem telling us how to do it, so let us just try. Suppose we have an A matrix with an eigenvalue in lambda equals A plus Bi, then I know A equals BCP inverse, which C equals AA, B minus B, and B with the real part of the eigenvector V in the minus the imaginary part of the eigenvector v. So let's do an example. Suppose we have a matrix A here and I want to find the matrix C. The first thing I need to do is to compute the eigenvalues of A. So I compute the determinant of 2 minus lambda minus lambda minus 2 1, which equals 2 minus lambda times minus lambda minus minus 2 times 1, so plus 2, which has to be equal to 0. Work out the brackets, we get a plus lambda squared, a minus 2 lambda plus 2 equals 0. We can write it as 1 square, lambda minus 1 squared, plus 1, and then we can solve for the eigenvalues. Lambda minus 1 equals plus or minus i, so we find lambda equals 1 plus or minus i. So there are of the form a plus or minus bi, so now I can find a C matrix. I can choose an eigenvalue. I say I choose the lambda equals 1 minus i, which means that we have a equals 1 and b equals minus 1. Then I find the matrix C equals a on the diagonal 1, a b over here, and a minus b over here. And then we have found our c matrix. Next, I also want to find my b matrix, of course. So I need the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 1 minus i. So that's kind of a calculation. Compute a minus lambda times i2 first. So a minus lambda times i2. And simplify, augment with zeros, and we have to do row reduction. First, it's convenient to have a 1 in the left right corner, so we switch the first two rows for here. And then I take 1 plus i times the first row and subtract that from the second row. And I get a second zero over there, obviously, but 1 plus i times one minus 1 plus i equals minus 2. So the minus 2 cancels out as well. But wait a minute, of course it does. I'm finding an eigenvector, which means that I need to have three variables in the end. If this wouldn't be a zero, I wouldn't have three variables. So I wouldn't have an eigenvector. So I could have known in advance that I should have gotten two zeros over there. But it's always good to check, because this is a check whether you computed your eigenvalues correctly in the first place. So let's continue. Uh, I can cho choose C2 free, then C1 plus minus 1 plus i times C2 equals 0, and I can solve for C1. C1 equals 1 minus i times C2. And put the two in a vector. I have C1, uh, C2 equals C2, and C1 equals minus i times C2. So there we have the solution of the linear system, and then we can choose any C2 we like in order to get an eigenvector, as long as you don't pick zero, of course. Uh, and the easiest choice is obviously C2 equals 1 to get an eigenvector. V equals 1 minus i, 1. So there we have an eigenvector corresponding to the lambda equals 1 minus i. And then we can wrap everything up to conclude. I know a equals PCP inverse. We have found our C already over here. And since we also have the matrix P, since we also have the eigenvector V, we can find the matrix P as well. It consists of the real part of V as a first column. The real part of V equals 1, 1 first column, and minus the imaginary part in the second column. The imaginary part 
yields uh, is to minus one zero. So minus the imaginary part gives me a plus one zero. So, and there we have our matrix P. P. So is it hard to find P and C? Well, not particularly, it's just some standard calculations. Good luck and try it yourself.